Hello everybody, welcome to yet another episode of My Tech Story. My name is Alice Kanjajo, your lovely host for this podcast. And today we are joined by someone who I'm very excited to have a conversation with. More so because we more or less work in this, not only in the same industry, but the same kind of occupation-ish, or rather the sector, let's say sector in marketing. Yeah. And she is also one of the lovely ladies we have in this season. Guys, as you know, in working in the tech industry, the female representation is 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 growing but it's there's still that disparity of between True. like m- the male representation and women so I'm very excited to have yet another powerful woman lady to join us for this episode <laughs> and I will just get straight into her intro so that we can now get to know a bit more about her and what she offers and just more about her story today we have the lovely Patricia Wanjira in studio and I am very excited to share her story with you guys because it's already sounding juicy from this intro I'm about to read for you. So Patricia is a product marketer who is very passionate about social innovation. And she is currently the marketing and comms lead at Chooms.io. Now, if you're an avid listener of this podcast, you are familiar with Chooms.io when we have Evans, who is a software engineer, share his story. If you did not listen, go ahead and listen to that after you listen to this episode. But yes. It's very exciting to have now a marketing perspective from Chooms. Patricia also has five years of B2B sales experience in Unilever, which is a top FMCG company with household names such as Sunlight, Royco, Dove, ETC, holding multiple roles in regional and key account management. Wow, I'm already very Mm, enticed <laughs> by this story. I have a few questions which we'll get into for that statement, but sure. uh, let me just finish reading this powerful intro. Her background <laughs> stems from marketing and finance, and she also holds a degree in Bachelor of Commerce, Marketing, and is a certified securities and investment analyst. It just keeps getting better and better, guys. <laughs> As the marketing lead at Chooms, Wanjira has led the successful go-to-market strategy and execution of the Chooms app in Kenya with customer base growth of over 80,000 in under a year of getting regulatory approval. Now, if you work in the startup life, you know this is not a small thing. Come on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> come on now. Chelsea, come on now. <laughs> Sorry. It's <laughs> when Jiru strives to be hopelessly curious and is on a mission to positively impact the world through brand building and storytelling. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Patricia Wanjira oh, thank onto you. the podcast. Thank wow. you so much. How did that feel? You know, um, I guess, I, maybe I'm repeating myself all the time on this podcast, but I love letting my guests write their intro and read it out so that they can have like a general outlook of what their accomplishments have been. Mm-hmm. And how did it feel reading about that or, list, or writing that or hearing me say that about you? Writing it is actually a way of seeing how like how much you've actually accomplished exactly. over a span of a couple of years. But now when you're reading it, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm giving you the, yeah. uh, the zest. I'm like, why am I not waiting to write to that? That's how to you it. should feel about yourself <laughs> because that's who you are. You yeah. know, This is not a bio I'm reading for, for uh, Sharon that is, I don't know from where, that I've just picked up randomly from LinkedIn. That's yeah. about you. So yeah. yes, that's very interesting. And I'm very curious to know more about you and your story. I think... Um, um, when you mentioned that you you have experience in B2B sales at Univer, Unilever, which is a top FMCG company, mm-hmm. I think I wanted to give more context to my audience what you mean by FMCG. Yeah, so it's an acronym, mm-hmm. uh, which means fast moving consumer goods. Okay. Yeah, so you're, when you think about what you use on your day to day, what's in your routine from mm-hmm. your, when you wake up, when you have breakfast, when you go to work, when you're getting ready. So brands at Brands are inter- you're inter- interacting with brands along the mm, way, and these are products exactly. you consume every day. every day. Yeah, so there are multiple players in that sector, and Unilever has been a dominant one since the 1800s, mm. having products in the personal care category, nutrition, mm. uh, home care. Yeah, mm. so yeah, that's okay. What I know. Okay, that gives a bit more context, yeah. and I'm very interested to know more about uh, you know your experience there at Unilever. Yeah. But I guess we're not gonna start there. 
Yeah. Um, I think we can just get straight into the story yeah. of how your tech journey began. Okay. So where did you say you started getting your interest in tech or product marketing or marketing in general? Because maybe you didn't, or did you just go straight into a marketing industry? <laughs> What's funny is when we were first coming into here, you told me that, uh, you know, you're a bit shy and, yes. you know, talking on mic. Yeah, and, you know, being, this being is in just, the voice. I think. But normally <laughs> when I meet people in marketing, they kind of have almost a similar personality to me, yeah. which I guess you've noticed is a bit more yeah. upbeat, upbeat, very, beat, very <laughs> out present. So, yeah, so. so, yeah, um, I don't know why I brought that up now, but <laughs> I just wanted to know, like, your journey also to getting into marketing yes. as well. So, uh, so, I don't know if I start, um, okay. So, from, in terms of my curiosity around marketing, that, mm -hmm. um, so, just to go back, uh, when you, of course, are pursuing a career, this starts when you are going through formal education, yeah. high school, uni. Yeah. So uh, I think the pivotal point is really right after high school where you're like, oh, am I going to be an engineer? Am I going to be a doctor, a lawyer? So for me, I was always, um, I'm the last child. So what that means, um, the ordinal position being the last one, you tend to be influenced by your older siblings and what they've done and what they've gone through. So my immediate older sister influenced a lot of what I wanted to do. So mm. when she swung to, I want to be a lawyer, I also went into that to direction. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I eventually got my voice and I was very passionate and very intent on being a doctor. Went wow. registered for the MBCHB in, I think, Moy Uni. Wow. But I think on the last day, I was uh, just like, do I really want to take this leap and go to this other realm? And I'm not feeling like I've really explored all my options. So, so this was in high school yes. where you had that deep, yeah. deep interest yeah. in getting to yeah. uh, medicine. Okay. Yes, and then I just took a leap, again influenced by my immediate older sister. She'd gone, gotten through University of Nairobi, done a Bachelor of Commerce in Accounting, seen her experience there, and I was like, let me go into a maybe a course that will allow me to have options because in third year, that's when you major, whether it's procurement, mm. human resources, marketing. But at that time, I was very hell-bent on pursuing finance because I mm. love math. I like, um, I, I had an interest in that at that point. Mm. Um, Wait, yeah. sorry, before we proceed, I want to know what was that shift in you for mm -hmm. was it just your sister but the shift from I think being a doctor is, and trying to pursue that yes. is something very intense and then that shift to finance is a big shift so oh. I want to know that that turning point where you are like I definitely don't think this is for me uh -huh. and finance is probably the way that I want to go. Oh great so I was lucky enough to be exposed to so I had uh, members of my family who were keen on getting me the opportunity to meet doctors people who've practiced mm. So I got a chance to interact with lecturers in the multiple universities, help me understand the different specializations. Is it dermatology? Is it orthopedics? Is mm. it um, all those areas? So in the process of doing all that, I was like, I don't think this you is for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I took a, uh, uh, I decided, okay, let me go to into an area that I can have multi, like, I'll you go have do, options I have options because you still don't know what you want to Exactly. Because you're still very pursue. young. Yeah. yeah. To Actually, the pressure what, to decide what you want to yeah. do. I don't know if there's a way they can make it better, that deciding point. I think it's also making it a bit more, without having to specialize that this that is what, exactly early, what you need to do yeah. after high school. Yeah. Because you're 18, 19, and then you're making a decision that is impacting the rest of your life. Exactly. So, yeah, very. I think it was a smart choice for yeah. you to go that direction because yeah. a lot of people end up just doing, you know what, I mean... I'm good in bio, so I guess it's medicine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm good in chemistry. Uh, History, this... law. EOS, I've never understood that <laughs> that, that connection. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, by the way, I don't know who told us who this. Told... <laughs> 
still that the correlation <laughs> is positive because so it's yeah, really that there's really so many empathic factors. like I'm good in history I must be a yeah. lawyer I think that was the biggest scam yeah. in biology medicine I guess I see it but the, the difference in intensity is um yeah. is unfathomable hey unfathomable that Kyo. word that one do you <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. okay so yeah so I got exposed uh so the options went to all this you got a chance to go to Moy meet uh, an actual other pediatric surgeon know what that's like it's seven plus years of studying and practicing so it's like ah, let me just explore these other options so uh, i wanted to be at that time i put my focus on being an investment banker started setting uh, those courses on cert- being a certified finance and investment mm. analyst went through that Um so when it came to that year specializing of course I was going to take finance uh but in the process of pursuing my uh professional certifications I came across a course called behavioral finance which allows you to see how even though you help people evaluate uh investments tell them this is the amount of return you get this is how much a bond is valued at this is what a stock price is and what you get to generate a return from people don't invest rationally yeah, yeah they yeah. You, you can create all the formulas in the world but the other big uh, determinants on why people will invest or where their money will be placed and that's usually pegged on their emotions mm. so behavioral finance allowed me to come across concepts like mental accounting where something is definitely valued differently in someone's mind like you have this maybe for example a strong attachment in investing behind the car you buy vis-a-vis all these things that are telling you don't buy this car yeah it won't make sense with the maybe income that you have exactly so i at that point felt the area where i'd be able to actually make an impact was in marketing and that's mm. how I transitioned into specializing in marketing because I felt that would be an area that would help me with this knowledge on why people invest or wh- why people make decisions the way they do marketing is a space where I'd learn how to uh impact to those decisions impact people's behaviors yeah. which ultimately impacts yeah. their actions yeah well that's a very interesting way to put it and i think it makes so much sense because even when i was in uni we did a lot of behavioral um analysis and how people's be- actions are influenced by you know very many things yeah. and it starts with the behavioral i th- what was it that we were saying your your thoughts mm-hmm. become your actions and then yeah. your actions become your behaviors yeah. so you have to figure out how you're going to get through that pipeline to get to the consumer yeah. and um yeah it's um I'm very happy that that's the career. Do you have any regrets that no, that's the career that No, no, I remember you we were a bunch of us who had already taken up finance first semester of that year then we were just like this is not it. Yeah. Um valuing companies, mergers and acquisitions that was not exciting. Mm. Uh, I think uh, me and my friends at the time so we decided to drop finance, take up marketing and never looked back. Yeah, uh, cuz it's just been a series of um this is not resonating with what I envision of giving me um joy so yeah never no, looked I back. love that because for me I think I went there out okay sorry for using me as an example <laughs> okay. Lord, I'm relating to your story in a sense of now I work for a fintech company but my path was very very marketing communications rather yeah. oriented pr oriented but right now i find myself starting to think of course every day i'm interacting with these you know product guys and uh, mm-hmm. david the ceo where i work and just getting to hear about the investments or the money side of things mm. or even just not them like me interacting with people not only in the fintech industry but in the tech industry and how they think and of course because my personalization was so much in the communications aspect mm-hmm. of things there's a lack that i have when it comes to now 
pegging it to a specialty like finance like mm. you do because you said this is finance and you have that background mm-hmm. and then you pegged it with marketing for me mm. it was more like just marketing and everything I'm learning as I go mm-hmm. right now I'm thinking hmm, maybe I should do a course in like mm-hmm. yeah. finance or like a Touch short course this, or yeah. investments or this and that mm-hmm. and so I would also, that's why I think I also love having a space like this where mm-hmm. it also gives people opportunity to know that hey there are better ways of you know, taking a trajectory of your, both your career and also how you manage your finances and how mm. you have an outlook of that um, from people like you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Okay, so you... Third year, you've decided to pivot into marketing. You're now focusing on this. Um, yeah. How did the journey proceed from there? Yeah, so again, when you're in, uh, shout out to anyone in U- University of Nairobi, Lower Kavete Campus, School of Business. We usually, let's say a class, we were a class of 300 guys, so you all wow. know that after this, you either go into the big four, because they'd set up uh, maybe recruitment drives coming for guys at University of Nairobi. So at the time, I knew I didn't want to go into audit. I didn't apply, which was like, people would be like, oh. Why are you reducing your chances of getting a, 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 job. Yeah, a job? So yeah. everybody was going into the yeah, auditing yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah. So even as a safety net, I was very intent on working with organizations that I'd seen do the big things. And in terms of marketing, what people what strikes you first is advertising. So who's throwing around a lot of money behind advertising? FMCG mm. players. So I was very intent on getting into mm. the, uh, the multinational players in this country, PNG, wow, Unilever, uni. yes, Unilever, wow. PNG, Diageo, because that's where you're seeing people flexing in terms of exactly uh, being able to run campaigns, run so activities. So immediately your initial thought was go big or go home, yeah. because people sometimes are yeah. normally like, okay, so I Fall just need a fast plan, job yeah. as I grow my career, but what I love, guys, like what I love about my guests on this podcast, <laughs> literally almost everyone. Their natural instinct was, okay, so what's the next step? Safaricom. Yeah. Or <laughs> like yeah. Uh, the big boys or looking to, okay, I'm looking to build my own product and this is what mm. it's going to do. So I mm. love that. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I applied to Unilever um, and I got a chance to join their sales team. So wow. that's when I transitioned into now. Again, my focus was marketing, but I got into sales. So it's usually a very different um, area in terms of, uh, because in marketing, you're brand building, you're developing the brand and communication. In sales, you're actually hitting the ground running, right? And this includes selling uh, yeah you just yeah. have to sell yeah like, you have there's targets no in between yeah. like you have you got the customers yes, that you need yes i'm um, sorry to take you back but this was after you finished uni yeah. or was this while you were still in uni after i finished uni did you have a period where you didn't have anything you were doing yes so and how long was that and how did that make you feel when you didn't have a job at that time okay or did you have something maybe just to backtrack when so in uni sorry in University of Nairobi, uh, one of the things I actually, that positively influenced me to join UN Loa Kabete was something I'd seen my sister experience, which is um, there's a program called Greenhorn Mentorship Program. Um, it's student-run mentorship program where students have reached out to mentors in the corporate world, match them with students in uni. Uh, to help them transition or get a glimpse of what's out there. So immediately I joined, of course, I signed up. Membership, I think, is still 500 shillings, but 500 shillings on your uni, that's, that's 10x that's of <laughs> that's, regular that's, membership. That's, that's yeah. a lot. That's lunch for even the week. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So I joined, I had a chance to get a mentor when I was in first year. This was someone who was already oh, wow. in the corporate world, uh, really connected with her. She was, she'd gone the audit route. Uh, transitioned into industry, like now living audit. And I got so so many learnings then, even though she was not in the field that I was curious and interested in joining, there are nuances and learnings I picked. Then in that year, fourth year, I also got another mentor. And in the process of that, I got to meet people, even who I got a chance to work with in Unilever while I was in uni. So during my period of transition, maybe from uni to, sorry, from uni to uh, work, I got a chance to, um, so when 
some of the mentors I had interacted with, uh, figured out I hadn't maybe secured a role. I got a chance to intern. So I actually did a three months internship at a mm. um, uh, recruitment company, mm. thanks to a connection I had made uh, through a mentor. That gave me an opportunity to see what headhunting looked like, what um, learning and development looked like, like under understand and appreciate the HR space. But I got a chance to do all those things thanks to, I think, um, mentorship. Mm. That has carried on and continued to inspire who I am right now, um, yeah, but it played a very big role in helping me know what is out there, helping me transition from uni to the workplace. Yeah, yeah, okay. so that, that's the what okay. I was up to. Okay, yeah. that's, I mean, that sounds better than uh, uh, what some people's stories are, because normally that tamaking of not finding a job can be a very intense moment for yes. people who are in uni. Yeah. But I think the route of going, uh, having a mentor from first year is mm. something that a lot of people don't have. So yeah. I'm very happy that that's, you took that route and you had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's something that I maybe, I wish I had. I think Strathmore also tries to, I was in Strathmore and mm -hmm. they try to give you a mentor first year and mm -hmm. they make sure, I think it's also a requirement for the lecturers that you're going to be given a mentor. Mm. But in that sense, it makes it feel forceful or you get a mentor that you is, not, you're not particularly yeah, that's vibing very with or in touch with. So my mentor, we, I mean, we met once, but I didn't feel that connection mm. any anyhow but uh, i think it shows the the i don't think there's anyone i've met who's had a mentor or two who's mm. regretted having that mm. person um to you know give them that some form of advice yeah. so i love that um taking it now to your now a big in one of the big boys but in sales <laughs> yeah so take us through yeah, that now. so joined um straight out of uni mm -hmm. i was handed keys to a d4d toyota hilux pickup told go and sell so of course um that was a challenge as i mentioned uh, as you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, or even anyone who knew me back in uni, I'm not the typical marketer who's very um, upbeat, talkative, generally introverted. So putting me at the forefront of selling, talking to mm. customers, going on the ground, that really opened up in terms of uh, giving me an opportunity to explore areas and um, strengths that I had been very latent and it was a really challenging and uh, eye-opening experience um, so I started off in regional account management so what happens in the distribution or uh, route to market uh, space you have what you call traditional uh, retail this you these are your kiosks your small shops mm. that people buy from mm. and then there's modern retail where people walk in self-service what you call a typically mm. a, supermarket. a supermarket yeah so i was handling um i started off with regional supermarkets in different parts of the country so i'd go off to nakuru south nyanza mm. got a chance to experience different um opportunities to work with uh retailers in different parts of the country gain insights on what is selling there because habits and what people are picking from shelf informs what products to push mm. and what will help you unlock your mm. sales numbers so i got a chance to do that then transitioned into what we call key account management where you look after now the sophisticated supermarkets, the Naivases, the Quick mm. Marts, uh, the Carrefour. Mm. So uh, at the tail end of my stint at Unilever, I was looking after Carrefour, mm. ShopRite game. Mm. And that gave me an opportunity to bring in um, transformational relationships in terms of uh, what these retailers have experienced from Unilever in other markets and match that with uh, what we offer here in terms of range, in terms of pricing, in terms of support, to bring mutual uh, relationships um, to fruition. So okay. that was also a really in uh, in interesting experience. And it was also a time when things were a bit rocky in the modern retail space. We had Nakumat go down, we had task is good down. Yeah. So it was- So which, which year was this that so uh, this you was were? 
this was in, so I started out in 2016, mm. um, transitioned into uh, key account management in 2017, tail end of 2017. Okay. So mm -hmm. when Nakumat was taking a hit, that's when CAF was coming up. So they were rapidly expanding. Yeah. They were rapidly becoming important to the business. Yeah. So we had to bring in what their expectations were at in, in this market, help them uh, grow and support them so that you mutually are serving customers who walk in and find their products on shelf. Yeah, so that was an interesting um, three, two, two and a half, three years. And wow, but, yeah. but I'm sure you learned a lot because I mean, you're traveling around the country. Yeah. You're you're walking into you're aisles. talking to different people yeah <laughs> the people you find merchandising putting products on shelf what will sell in a particular store even within nairobi is not what will sell out in another, in store. another store yeah wow. so picking that and i feel like that was one of the points where i um appreciated tech because we have all this, um, the element of big data, because there's all these numbers flying around, yeah. like all these pack sizes selling at these price points, you needed to understand how do you position that. When you have a new um, innovation, yeah. a new variant, yeah. which pack size should you place in this store versus this other store, what level in, of investment. So you need a lot of data analysis yeah, actually to yeah, make those yeah, decisions. Yeah, 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 channel that back to the team internally, uh, so that you have a successful launch and innovation. Also use that data to help a customer understand, you know, I want you to buy X. Mm. Um, this is why, because we'll give you X number of uh, in terms of support and we'll mutually grow. So you'll buy from mm. us, your customers will benefit because they'll right, find the right pack at the right price. So it was, I think big data was the first point of my liking and my uh, mm, allure to interest. tech. Yeah. Now that's yeah, when the tech no, story yes, begins. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so in the back end, tail end of, and then, so this was uh, all through from 20s, 2018 to 2020, mm -hmm. then the pandemic hit. And um, so the beauty and the, the, the beauty and the inspiration I drew from Unilever is it's a very purpose-driven company where brands are pushed to have a purpose. So you'll see, like, for example, in the context of Kenya, we have a brand like Lifebuoy that's dedicated to helping um, people nurture habits around uh, hygiene. And yeah. that brings in, for example, um, or reduces chances of kids, let's say, for example, on the age of under the age of five, uh, coming across jams and yeah. getting sick. So yeah. purpose-driven brands is something that was very big and something that I picked up from Unilever. So being in sales, I was not, I was able to deliver in terms of execution, but I was not part of the, um, in terms of strategy of having that uh, roll out in the market. And I had a strong yearning for that. So uh, the when COVID hit and everyone was just like introspecting, what mm -hmm. do I really want to do? Having done this for about five years, I was like, um, I think I want to explore again. I got into that space where I want to explore. I decided to take a career break. You decided to take a career break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hey. decided to take a break. Okay. That yeah. is a very audacious thing to do. Yeah. Smack in the middle of the pandemic. Um, I Because, I mean, I mean, how was it working in the pandemic? And then I think, did the pandemic heavily influence your decision to take a, a break? Or was it just you were exhausted and it was like, you need something new, something fresh for your so it excitement? Was, so it was... Having, I think, been in Unilever for around four to five okay, years, that's a, that's yes, a lot of years um, as well. I had felt I wanted to explore. So I was really, really drawn to the impact work that the brands were doing, and I wanted to be more involved. Mm. I felt I could, of course, do that by growing within the organization, transitioning, yeah. and opportunities were there. But I also felt there was always this yearning to discover and explore what is what else, which other industry excites me. And that's um, the other space where I think my um, my sister keeps telling me when whenever all my sisters always ask me whenever they have an issue or they want help, I'm always telling them, oh, there's this app, there's this solution, there's this. So 
so, I know that feeling. Yeah, so I innately, <laughs> I, I have a love. Um, I've had a love for tech. So I always felt I hadn't scratched that itch. Mm. So taking the break, being curious about other spaces that piqued my interest was something that all culminated in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Smack in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was in November 2020. So how long was your career break? And what did you do within your career break? And how did you transition to your next role? Yeah, so that was, uh, I think it was six to nine months. Wow. Six to nine months of wanting to just, um, for example, it's what I think people call, um, what are they called? Like when, a gap year. When, up here, yeah. when you're maybe still in uni, want to take a break yes. before you transition into yeah. work, uh, full-time working. So that's yeah. what I decided to do in the middle of my career. Mm. So I explored so many things. I uh, During the pandemic, I picked up a love for plants. I'm so excited to see all the plants here. If, if, plants. if I'm not looking at it, it's, oh, the, it's the photos there that's just picking my eyes. So I decided to start a business where we'd get gardening essentials with a friend of mine and sell them to curious plant house plant um, owners. owners. I spent a lot of time, uh, of course, taking up courses in areas that I was interested in, which was social impact and okay, innovation. So you yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just chilling. Just chilling. Just <laughs> taking it easy. So, yeah. So that's what I was doing, and in the process, that's how I transitioned into chums. Yeah. What do you mean in the process? <laughs> that's how you transition. You know, when people regularly take a career break, you yeah. know, or not, okay, rarely do people take career breaks, yeah. which maybe should be normalized, but it's also because of the uncertainty of what your career is going to become if I take this break. Yeah, like, will someone the want to hire me? Yeah. Um, will I still be able to deliver the things that I want to deliver? What mm. I like that you said in your career break that you two are in, having interest in courses. Mm. I mean, plans, okay, plans seems like a hobby. Whole let me be, not say you yeah. are taking it as a hobby yeah. rather, but uh, you are still doing courses and everything but you know I think people would be curious to know mm -hmm. how you are able to make that transition now into back into uh, your uh, a career in tech because yeah. yeah. it's not uh, a natural process for a lot of people as well definitely so I think was it recently I read somewhere where someone was saying uh, who said that you have to for example um, continue working in a specific role to get to a certain level of, for example, pay, so that you feel that you're doing what you're supposed to do, right? Mm. Who said that's the narrative? Who said you can't mm. stop what you're doing or you don't have to progress mm. and then start afresh? Mm. So um, I keep saying this, I'm very privileged that I didn't have dependence when I was making the decision so I didn't have kids I was not looking after anyone it's I was only responsible for myself and of course there are lifestyle adjustments to taking a decision where you are stopping um you you yeah you no longer have income, exactly yeah uh, so there were of course financial considerations for that um and the so the transition happened i had a chance to interact with a couple of the team members at chums uh i think it was actually in 2019 mm. when they were still they had just started researching the product seeing an opportunity that um people were not saving and why they were not saving so mm. in the process of that research i was one of the people who were answering the question so what how do you save now, now that so you're you are familiar with the person yes, who was that, yes. the team rather that yes was doing with sam and time. jogo uh when they were doing the research the how did you know them sorry uh, so it's okay i met them through a mutual friend from uni uh, so when uh, Sam and Jogu were setting off their first startup, mm. uh, that was around um, in third year. I mm. was in third year, got mm. a chance to meet them. They were starting off at C4D Lab. Mm. So when I had a chance to go to Chirom, sorry, Chirom and see what they were doing. So that's when we got acquainted. So we kept the friendship going. So at uh, now in 20, 
Fast Track to 2019, when they were researching the app and the opportunity, sizing the opportunity, I got to hear about it. And just keeping up and keeping tabs on each other in 2020, 2021, uh, when they were just about to now start seeking approval mm. uh, to enter the sandbox, that's when I saw an opportunity. They actually invited me like, yo, we feel like you have an experience in uh, B2B, this opportunity, there will be opportunity for business development and B2B in tunes, you can come in and just, um, yeah, take part in our discussions as we are ideating and that's mm, how I join wow. tunes, yeah. That's best case scenario, guys. I think that's, I think, again, something that we repeat on this podcast is um, opportunity, um, is it opportunities when, opportunities when luck meets preparation? Yeah. I feel like you being there, learning more about the product and being there at the right place at the right time, mm. even if maybe initially you didn't have the idea of I need to be in this company, mm. uh, I think you were in the right place at the right time and you were also prepared for that eventuality, which is something that we really advocate for here. Yeah. So, yeah, very interesting to hear that that was how you got now into it tunes, tunes, into the role, and then now growing. You know, also when you're doing a startup, it's hard to find people who believe in your product as much as you do. Yeah. And so people who join your team, again, you know, you're very passionate about scaling this product, but mm. you also need to find a team that is also equally, or at least will want to put the same amount of effort into scaling what you're building. Yeah. And so... I think that loyalty as well is something that they really, I mean, many startups value. And yeah. uh, one big quote that Dominic uh, said on this podcast is that um, you can meet the right people can build the right product, but the, ro the, wrong, the wrong team, team. The, yeah. wrong, the wrong people yeah. can't, can't, can never build the right product. product yeah. um, that he, the pe people are the, are the greatest assets that you have. True. And so um, I think that's also that this, what your story is mm. an actualization of that in yeah. that, you know, I feel like they really said that we really want to keep you in mm. and then we'll make your role to what it's going to be today. And, you know, when you take a better on something guys i think also because you did an analysis of like cost benefit and yeah. um you maybe you didn't have anything to lose at that time yeah, not yeah, yeah as i mentioned so. um the worst thing they could say is no you can yeah. come yeah and you move on and, and you like, move and yeah. you, try, you go on your journey yeah so the, actually the the interesting bit is when i was joining uh what they were saying is my skill set in b2b because that's uh, the experience that I had, but also my curiosity to learn. And at the time, I was pursuing courses on product management. Because again, wow. back to what you I was getting ready. Yeah, back <laughs> to uh, what I was feeling. I wanted. I was yearning, and I that inspired my transition was, mm. if you know the like the kind of role or the kind of. Um, expertise expected from a product, someone in product is championing the vision and carrying the vision of what the product will look like to serve yeah. customers. And that's what I was intent on coming to see. I remember even when I was undergoing the courses, I was using Tunes as a case study to learn how to write user stories, how to do wow. research, how to do the ah, thumbs on, some, all those things. Yeah. So it was such a uh, practical, uh, experience for me I was learning and I was mm. learning in action and mm. yeah and that was and I think that's how I actually now came to and I saw Dominic in action so yeah. getting and that's how I've met you so seeing someone carry that vision be deliberate about understanding what the customer wants is expecting delivering that through working with engineers ah so that was what really drew me in to of course, um, chums. Yeah. I think also some key takeaways that I'm hearing from you is that I think the biggest one is that a lot has to do with the connections that mm. you're building. Yeah. Even, you know, it's funny when we're in uni, we are always told, or we used to always be told that just be friendly to everyone. You never, these are the people who you're going to yeah. be meeting and these are the people who are going to give you opportunities or yeah. whatnot. And like at the, when you're in that, at that time, it's like, okay, whatever, I'm just in uni, I'm just here to do class. Okay, <laughs> where are we going to party next? Like, yeah. <laughs> what's yeah, top happening? priorities. Whatever, yeah. top priorities. Yeah. Number one, enjoyment. Number two, 
whatever it is but our last was like the education bit of it yeah. okay maybe not for some people and <laughs> I'm, I'm some people honestly me being in covid uni like uni was the least of oh, my priorities yeah. i was busy trying to figure out how i'm growing my podcast <laughs> and my youtube channel yeah. um, but it all came i did a full 360 but i wanted the connections bit of things i think guys say it but really like the practicality of it. like connections can do wonders that in that any other thing can't do. Yeah. Um I think putting yourself in the right spaces. Go for those workshops. Go for those um what are they called? Yeah, meet people Events. outside your niche. Meet people outside your niche. niche. You yeah. never know if what maybe what you're doing is not even what you're supposed to exactly. be doing. Exactly. Yeah. Um you know, be kind to everyone. Yeah. When you go to a space, don't leave without saying hi to at least a stranger, one person. It really changes. Yeah. Because one day you'll tell them, "Hey, by the way, I'm, I don't know, I do marketing." for mm. you know a tech company but you know five years in and they are looking for someone who does something that you mentioned there's a guy I remember yeah. from that I met in Nairobi who did this this and that and that's how you get those opportunities yeah. and that's even how I got my job okay I, I guess of course I did a very intense interview but just me knowing Simba from high school just a random like we follow each other on Instagram and mm. you know I, he knows that I do some content here and there on YouTube and then here we are so yeah i think i just wanted to really highlight that how the importance that making connections yeah. has yeah and also of course uh treating people as people not treating people exactly, as people exactly not looking at what that person can help you at that point exactly with, but exactly. just wanting to connect to them at that human element exactly. uh, and human level mm. yeah. and also just keeping in mind that easier said than done of course so i think we're all chasing the bag of course at the end of the day but also just keeping in i think having the mentality of i'm not looking for just a money opportunity mm. i'm looking for an opportunity on how i'm going to be a part of something that is making change or making an impact mm. in the world or something that you can be passionate about makes it i think once you have that mindset it's easier for you to penetrate into because you're building a solution for people mm. and not because you're looking for financial cause because even the way you speak on the product or even the way you speak of yourself or what you're looking for um 100% is will be impacted by how really your what your personal mission is i think it's very important for us to think about that um as well so and i'm saying this because we're related to what you said it's like you are looking into that thing that you knew you had an itch to scratch the product side of things and you were using chums just as case studies just to you know uh, make yourself understand like this so on top of the self fulfillment is also like how else you also mentioned the behavioral changes how else can you mm, um, impact. impact people's change our behaviors through the work that you do mm. so yeah yeah yes. um i think that's a powerful message and uh, now we can go back to now you getting into chums and yeah. now you're helping them scale what's been your experience working in marketing um for a tech company really yeah. and so the changes that you've been experiencing been I think for example having our every time we do an annual review it feels like it's been years within a year <laughs> <laughs> a quarter feels a lot can happen yeah. and you hit I think the thing I've come to realize is you hit milestones and you because you're always constantly chasing them you don't take time to realize wow we did that yeah we need to sit in this moment before we keep moving yeah. yeah but it's been at at first of course i'm i'm coming from a place where it's a company that has structures has like it's siloed it's big to to a start to a start <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so but, but of course i had already that expectation um not there i came with a very open mind and very with that owner's mindset mm. where you're owning the product you're owning the process you're owning the journey yeah. and being around people who are very curious 
uh, being around people who are open to helping, open to learning, was even more powerful and reduces all that um, maybe um, change in yes. environment. But again, I had taken a six to nine months break and tried a business, so I knew <laughs> I was ready. F- you were ready yeah, for startup yeah, life. Yeah, so it for wasn't such a, a wait, we did. change, cha- <laughs> big change for me, but it was, of course, very... Uh, exciting. Every day is different. Mm. Uh, getting a chance to work with entrepreneurs, you know how one day can start in one uh, one way and, and then end. It com- takes a complete turn. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a very rewarding, very eye-opening experience. Uh, just to start off, what you think is the definition of marketing? changes uh, or what rules and uh, descriptions, what bounds, you can't go into this or you can't go into that. In a startup, when the structure is very linear, it's about ownership and running with things, yeah, because things change. So I have had an opportunity to explore and get out of my comfort zone. So instead of saying, oh, oh, I'm only responsible for customer acquisition, you get to chime in into maybe something that will help in the overall productivity of the team. You'll get to uh, chiming in on other areas like if it's platform stability you get to if you like at the time I was very I came in helping in with marketing but I was very, I was very curious uh, with product management so I spent a bit of time nagging and tagging at events who'd been in software engineering curious as to how maybe for example he runs his day he goes about scoping a, a feature and all those elements so with an open space to learning and just um, running into meetings, you're there to learn and everyone knows you're there to learn. If you ask the weirdest and dumbest question, no one will judge you, they'll answer you. So it's it's been a very... It's been a great quite ex- exactly. a startup yeah. experience, yeah. basically. Yeah, and of course the brand, when I was joining, uh, we didn't have a... Uh, we had very low equity. We had uh, a low customer base. That's true. Yeah. So, so you started generally from zero to zero, 100. defining the brand guidelines, defining what you want people to perceive us, refining who our target audience is. As you know, Chums App is a saving and investment platform that allows people to save from as low as five shillings. So this means anybody can use the app. Exactly. But when it comes to marketing, you have to hone in. You have to know who you're speaking to. You have to know the language. You have to know the channels that you want to tap into. You work in a startup environment where budgets are limited, so you have to take the to money that you, have you, that you have and, and be go with it. Exactly. Make sure you're making choiceful investments, but also, the environment and culture at Chums has been very encouraging in terms of you try, fail fast, and move. Uh, move. Yeah, yeah, you move. Yeah, I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like, the mentality is you can't wallow in what didn't work. And exactly. You need to move and you need to keep pushing yourself to move forward. Yeah. Um, but that's very interesting. Yeah, I think uh, just to give a bit more context, what does your role entail as a product marketer? Mm. In case someone is looking to get into product marketing, I think you've just mentioned you do marketing for a B2B level, yeah. which I'm assuming is probably different from a B2C level. Like, yeah. You know, I focus, you know, as we're social media, this, that, like we are out there, but I, I'm guessing it's also what you do because mm. it's a startup. I guess maybe just give me context on what uh, your so day-to-day looks like. Yeah, so oh, my day. Okay, no, my day can change. <laughs> okay, Any rather day. just an overview of what <laughs> your role entails. Uh, my role in writing would entail any communication. Um, we are we are pushing out to partners, stakeholders, um, and of course our customers, mm. and of course even internally with the team, uh, but. It's my core, for example, uh, um, what are they, like targets or KPIs around customer acquisition. How can we uh, get more customers on the platform and also spills over to retention. So I'll spend a lot of time mm. with our customer support team to understand what challenges are people experiencing, mm. how can we communicate that better, how can the platform communicate that 
issue and also bring that back now into engineering like this we're having an issue with this feature people are not receiving us best so mm. it entails elements of communicating uh, by bringing more people to the platform and making sure they stay so I um, so essentially in terms of uh, when you look at the organo organogram for example mm -hmm. i'll interface with the development team the product and engineering team in terms of bringing feedback on what uh, or how the product has been perceived or received what changes need to come in interfacing with customer success like what are people saying spending a bit of time speaking directly to customers is this uh, what's the challenge and now uh, managing and running with uh, efforts around acquiring customers on the platform. So if it's advertising, if it's organic content, if it's um, testimonials, making sure all those parts are moving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's what uh, my day to day looks like. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, probably what I had in mind as well. Yeah. On what your role could potentially look like. So yeah, guys, tech doesn't have mean you have to be the dev. <laughs> can also just come along, join us in the marketing team. Yeah. And <laughs> it's very exciting. Yeah. Um, honestly, if there was a niche for that, of course, depend, of course, with my personality, yeah. I think um, the marketing and communication side of things is the more so interesting side of things because product or engineers, they are so focused on this thing needs to be perfect yeah. but by the time they think about how we're actually getting customers yeah. it's like a by the way thing and that should be the number one thing because okay we are building building okay you every day is just coding but yeah. who are, what are you coding yeah, you, for but i think it's the culture that's been it there is. especially from silicon valley where you uh you consistently obsessing about your product and you know mm. if you obsess and make sure you get a perfect product it will pull customers yeah. but especially it in the space where you're like taking that. yeah people's money you have they need to trust they you they need to trust you so you, you have to, to demonstrate it for so long. yeah through efforts mm. on awareness mm. and spending money behind that needs to come in and and uh, complement the really beautiful product that you've designed and come up with with uh, with something that people can resonate with. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. But I mean, I guess that's why it's collaborative. You know, mm. you can't just do everything by yourself. Mm. Um, sometimes you need a team and a powerful team. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to see how far Streams has come, and I'm excited to see the journey that it's going to keep taking. Yeah. I think as we wrap up, wow, that was a powerful uh, episode. Yeah. Thank you so um, much for having me. You're welcome. Yeah. As we wrap up, I'm going to ask you just a few questions Ooh. that I ask Ooh. my guests at the end of every episode. Oh, gosh. And nothing too crazy, just very simple <laughs> question that... Um, you should have shared this as well. Before, I did so share that. this as well. You didn't read my oh email Oh, my well, gosh. But, um, oh, my gosh. That is a I side do, I feel like... <laughs> Like, I, maybe chat. I just opened you just opened the other <laughs> document I didn't open the one I was supposed to read Perhaps. I'm so sorry but it's yeah. okay yeah. it's okay I did send them but the episode has gone flawlessly so mm. no one had that so what is one word to describe the journey to get to where you are today and why one word yeah if you're to wrap up your tech story uh -huh. what's one word you would use and why um I think it's curiosity mm. and there's a the reason for this is without that okay the reason I I go back to that is we've consistently been spaces or I have consistently been spaces where I haven't, um, I've had to break off from what I've perceived is expected of me and um, taken a risk to be curious about something that's very undefined. Mm. So that's how, of course, I made the leap to tech and where I am now. So, uh, and it's it happens. I don't know if it's our education system that just at one point just steals or takes away our curiosity. curiosity. So you have to be very, it's very divergent when you now go off the band and you're curious about other areas than what the path you, that's been defined or what's expected is. So yeah, 
that. Okay. Yeah. I get that. I yeah. get that. Yeah. Uh, that's a lovely one. Uh, mm. But I and I genuinely think it wraps up your story because yeah. you talked a lot about curiosity. Yeah. Okay. And what advice would you give to someone who is aspiring to get to where you are today? Um. I think uh, would say in the day in the time and space we're in now they're literally whatever will limit you is yourself mm, you are your own limit yeah no one is busy thinking about about you and <laughs> all the mistakes you're making nobody the way they do it for five ten minutes and then they continue getting wrapped up in their, in their own in their own so for especially introverts like me who can go on off on the overthinking tangent. Mm. Uh, we call it in the behavioral in psychology space, it's called the spotlight effect, where you are, obs you're thinking the spotlight literally is on you. Everything is revolving around you. Yeah, but <laughs> everyone else it's feels the same, the same way. So way. they'll pick out and see someone say it, someone thinks someone uh, would want that for you. And then they go back and retreat into their own space. So fight that urge to uh, think that everyone is um, thinking that you're making the wrong move, you're making mistakes. So pursue whatever you are very curious and passionate about now. There are so many tools and enablers. People are open to having difficult conversations when you are stuck in a rut, when you are, um, of course, we are living in the very tough economic times. It's also, you're like, ah, I can't make this move now I can't make this choice now I can't make this change now but if not now when if not now yeah then. if not now when mm. yeah so overcome that spotlight effect and go forth okay yeah go yeah. forth go forth <laughs> go forth <laughs> you'll fail and people will speak about it for 10 5 minutes it's and so they true. Move literally on. people move on so fast They're you're the only one who think you, you yeah. think about it for 10 yeah. years but literally people move on in yeah. 2 seconds so yeah and it's what i've yeah, seen great. also working with entrepreneurs they feel a feature will be launched it feels move on mm. no one will be busy bashing your field feature for the it's rest true. of it. people will move on i mean and if it's failed how many yeah. people have actually yeah. uh, seen the failure if, if it's too magnified it in your mind, <laughs> again, you it get... It will affect you yeah. deeply, which yeah. is not... It's not the mindset to have, especially in the ever-evolving tech space exactly. and especially in the startup life. So yeah. I 100% agree. And do you have any regrets or anything that you wish you would have done differently in your journey? Or did you do you feel like it all came full circle? I think it's, it's come... Everything has... Um, uh, taken its course mm. like at the timing when I decided to transition take a career break or when I decided to drop um, finance when marketing everything has taken uh, its course because I can't really change a lot of that I can't wallow so much in that mm, yeah so it's just to take all all that energy and go back and think oh this if I did that I can definitely overcome the yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's all been a part of your journey, honestly, mm. because the experience for in Unilever, I think also has influenced who you are today in yeah. tunes and also just who you are going to keep tunes is also going to influence. And I think it, honestly, I feel I strongly believe that everything you experience is exactly what you're meant to experience to get to you where you're supposed to be. Mm. Like when you reach your end good, you, everything will start making sense. Like that's why I had to do yeah. this. That's why I probably did this. And then it like, yeah. it, now I'm good at it now. At yeah. this particular. You know what I'm saying, guys? The journey. <laughs> the journey the, is the destination. The journey is the... Ooh. Yeah. You think you're getting to... Uh, I love that. Yeah. That's a TED Talk speech yeah. right there. The, the journey, journey is, is the, dest the destination. So you have to find your... Like, settle in it and be like, that was part of... That was yeah, that, that is that, yeah. that is part of yeah, the story. Actually, studies on happiness are it's not like the end. It's these yeah. moments of enduring hardships and that conquering yeah, them. yeah that you look but like, I did that. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Ah, mm. Gosh. Last question is. 
give us a powerful parting shot close off your episode. You've just given that one. You I, have. I you have. actually have. I have. You Sindio, actually have. Sindio, okay. The journey is the destination. There's that? nothing else to add there. Honestly, yeah. that is the parting shot. Yeah. Thank you so much for gracing this podcast. Guys, if you enjoyed this conversation, make sure that you subscribe from wherever you're listening from. It's absolutely free and helps us scale this podcast. Uh, and if you enjoy this episode, imagine how many other people would enjoy it. Just think of it. That. The journey <laughs> is the destination. So the journey of you just following, subscribing, <laughs> you know, is also part of the process. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you also share this episode with your friends, family, or whoever you, you think would be interested in this conversation. And make, I don't know if you were going to leave us a couple of links that you think people could follow up on your journey on, or, you know, it, you don't have to, but uh, if there's something, maybe your LinkedIn. Yes, you can I'll link definitely share my LinkedIn. That's something we'll share with our yeah. audience. You never know, another person Opportunity. Someone is listening in uh -huh. and like, <laughs> is ready ha. to plug you in. Yeah. I'm also part-time recruiter here at <laughs> I'm a Tech Story. <laughs> Not that she's leaving, guys, but uh, <laughs> I'm also quickly realizing that uh, this could also be used as your CV. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Alice. Yeah, thank hey, you This so was much. a pleasure. I hope you I enjoyed sharing your story, and um, it was insightful for for yourself as well to Definitely. see your journey. I, it's been a really nice experience. Thank you yeah. so much. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.